Welcome to the VRK podcast brought to you by Brilliant Studios. Our aim is to get every single arcade owner in the world onto our show so they can share their story. So if you're interested in becoming one of our guests, please let us know. You can join our Discord. It's linked down in the description below. Uh, we've been very busy with the launch of Atlantis recently, so we haven't had an episode. Uh, apologies for that, but we are back. And today we have Dan from Reality Room in Greenberg, Pennsylvania. How are you doing, Dan? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Uh, we, we we spoke a few weeks back for the first time, right? And I was just asking you about your arcade and how long you've been open for. How long have you been open for? Let everyone know. Yeah, uh, so we opened uh, November 10th of last year. So we're still within year one. Yeah. Um, we're located inside of Westmoreland Mall in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And it's been a crazy ride for this first year so far. So uh kind of asked for a better year one <laughs> nice and is this your first ever vr arcade yeah uh oh. prior to this there i was working for a company called metify uh that reached out to a lot of pro gamers um okay. basically worked in the if you know the uh fgcs and the uh like rocket league things like that um and bringing on top end players there giving them a platform to uh, monetize their abilities for coaching skills to people that want to get better in uh, video games. Ah, oh, cool. So what made you want to open up your own VR arcade? Yeah, um, we're, we worked remote a lot of the times there. Uh, we were shifting and then uh, my son was about to be born in February of last year. So we were making some changes. Uh, my partner had reached out to me and he said, hey, I've had this idea for a while. I just don't understand the tech side of things there. He's like, what do you think about it? Mm -hmm. And uh, my first reaction to VR was from the original PlayStation VR years ago. And mm -hmm. I remembered uh, playing you know, Resident Evil 7 for the first time on uh, the original PlayStation VR. Yes. And I lasted about 15 minutes and I was nauseous. So. I was a little hesitant at first. I was like, I know uh, VR's come a long way since. Um, so I went out, spent some money on Quest 2, and I was like, we'll see how this goes. So I dove in, and the rest is history. You know, Quest 2, absolutely loved it. Was playing all day. Had friends that were jumping in with, you know, games like, uh, I think it's called Blastian. Blastian. Yep. I don't know exactly how to announce it, but uh, we were having a blast with that there. So um then you know my kid was obsessed with it there he started playing gorilla tag so uh he just kind of became my little consumer test toy there i was like hey what do you think of this here is this, you know so if the kids love it you know i'm like all right which headsets and what, what kit did you decide to buy for your arcade and, and why yeah um so there was a lot of back and forth um so one of one of the main focuses that we obviously have are the virtual reality escape rooms. So, you know, we thought, okay, if we go the quest route, we're going like a cheap end there. There might be some issues. Do we want to do that there? And then we thought um, at that time the Quest Three wasn't on the market. So um, then we started looking into HTC Vives, and then uh, the way that we decided to go was with the Valve indexes for um the escape room that way we're just directly connected to the pc less issues a lot of the companies were recommending it so we were like all right um so we did some uh pulley cords there so in our venue uh we have them you know strapped to the ceiling come down i still it's got mine the way to go yeah 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 unfortunately yeah, i have parted so, way to buy our index uh, that's very sad yeah. day yeah go on, sorry yeah yeah, no, I was going to say, so, um, you know, there's a lot of research trying to, you know, just late nights, reaching out to companies, seeing what's out there, um, you know, came across a couple different ones that we partnered with there. Um, so we use um, ARVI and uh, Ubisoft in our venue. Uh, there's another one that we're in talks with. Um, they're more of the free room stuff there. Uh, great escape rooms. Just haven't pulled the trigger on that one yet there, but... You know, there's a lot of different experiences that we have right now. Uh, 20 escape rooms currently. And then uh, this last week, there was 21. I don't know if you've ever heard of a game that just came out. So, no, well, which <laughs> called Atlantis? That? I don't know. Yeah. No, I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> have you had much so, playtime with Atlantis? Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we reached out for the beta access. Mm -hmm. um, 
I had pulled some people from other stores in the mall, um, had them come down. So me and two others jumped in. Uh, during the beta, I ran into a little issue where I got stuck in the, the wall coming through a window. Um, yeah. It seems to be fixed from that point so far, but um, I got to at least take the headset off there and then watch the rest of it there. So during the beta, you know, obviously you're kind of expecting that stuff. Yeah. Um, and then you guys had sent the uh, final version and stuff. And so far, uh, we've had multiple people run it and they love it. Uh, I've had some people that have done some of the other ones from uh, some of the other companies there. And yeah. uh, this was the, they said it was just a good feeling there. It has that like action uh, adventure. Uh, it's a little bit different. You know, I don't want to say it's a hard puzzling game, but it, it's such a good blend is the yeah. way that they've described it. So pretty good. Oh, it's great to hear. Thanks for your, thank you for your feedback. Uh, I know the team works really, really hard on, on the game, really hard on the game. And we're currently working on the first patch as well. So lots of feedback coming in and uh, we're trying to listen to all the arcades and get, get things implemented that people have asked for. So yeah, it's been a really crazy week or so, but it's <laughs> been really fun. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, your, your discord has been, uh, on top of everything, well, you know, not just for me, I see other people jumping in there and, um, you know, you guys are super quick to respond. So you get, you guys care. That's one good thing that I can say about you guys there. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Yeah. I'm sure the guys listening, uh, back in the office will appreciate that too. Absolutely. So you offer more than just VR at your arcade. I noticed that you offer quite a few different things. Uh, do you want to let everyone know what it is that you have on as uh, other options? Yeah. So um, like you said, we initially started with everything VR. Um, so what we ended up doing there is we have the, uh, I call it the zombie cage. People might have seen on like TikTok and stuff like that, where it's like a big still jail sale looking thing there, four mm -hmm. player shooters, zombies, aliens, dinosaurs. Uh, people love that has the, uh, HTC Cosmos, they come down Four player has the guns. Yeah. Um, then we have a flight machine that people lay down on. There's five games on that, that you can fly on the back of a dragon, a snowmobile, you can, you know, fly on a wingsuit. Um, there's a Gatling gun that has a couple of different games. There's a motorcycle that has a water pump in the base there on, uh, it has like street racing, space racing has um one that's a wave runner so when you hit the jumps and you land in the water it shoots out there so a lot of the immersive vr stuff yeah racing and then uh some of our favorite stuff is the uh vr roller coaster simulators there on the hydraulics moving you around mm -hmm. hitting you with compressed air um those are honestly some of the biggest attractions and they're not even games they're just experiences and you just see people going again and again and again on that so um if you're starting a uh, vr arcade I would incorporate that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we partnered with Hollowgate uh, yeah. to have the first uh, Tower Tag Battle Zone mm -hmm. in North America. Um, so Tower Tag, super popular game. Uh, it's in their arenas that's been on the market. Uh, we decided to go that route just because it has that competitive vibe where it actually has physical towers that's wireless. They use HTC Vive Focus 3s on those. So haptic vest it, it really gives people the experience of uh competitive play while also giving you a lot of the unique experiences that people haven't got to try on haptic vests um and then obviously the vr escape rooms there um the one thing that we noticed as people are coming in is not everybody enjoys vr well uh a huge hit five star reviews left and right uh the main thing was you know smaller kids mm -hmm. what can we do there so uh, we had actually ended up partnering with a company called Knockerball um, that was also in the mall. We ended up taking them over. Um, and then we also now own a uh, chocolate confectionery ice cream place in the mall there too that ties into our birthday parties. So uh, that's what we have right now. And then we're working on uh, bringing something else into the fold there uh, with a company called Gel Blasters. Uh, it's called Nexus. So that's kind of the next thing on the uh, agenda for us. What advice would you give to somebody who is looking to open up a VR arcade? Yeah. Um, like you said, if I, if I could do it again, mm -hmm. um, like you said, while we have 
the race car, the moto, the Gatling, the flight machine, those are all single player things. Yeah. Uh, something I've noticed that is when people come into the venue, mm -hmm. they want to do, they want to do racing, but they really wish they could race against their friend or, you know, they, they, they flock to the cage over the Gatling because it's a four player setup or they could do two players in there mm -hmm. or the single players sometimes there. So, um, when you're, when you're thinking about that, think of team play through and through. Um, the other thing I would say is you, you, you don't have to go out and spend tens and hundreds of thousands on uh, a lot of the equipment that's out there. There's a lot of great ways that you could do it. You could open up a venue perfectly fine with probably 15, 20,000 and computers and headsets alone and do it you know, yeah. properly and people would still love it. VR's, uh, while it's becoming more mainstream, it's something that uh, it's still a brand new experience to a lot of people. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. So I'm guessing you bought out quite a bit of money by the sound of things with all of the stuff that you've got. <laughs> <laughs> sure did. <laughs> yeah. 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 And how how is it going? Like, as in. Is everything popular or do you have certain machines that don't get used as much? Anything that's kind of used the most? Yeah. Um, like you said, the, the thing that gets used the most surprisingly, and we put it up to the front of the store for that. So keeping in mind, you're in a mall there. So yeah. people are walking by and you're kind of window shopping um, are the like movie roller coaster simulators there. Mm -hmm. Um one thing I wasn't expecting there was um, in our state, there's uh, anything that has multi seats is considered an amusement ride. Um, so then you have to, <laughs> so we hit some legislation, you yeah. know, we hit some, we hit some problems there with the government there. They were really cool with it. They didn't shut us down or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. They were just like, you know, get everything certified properly and then, you know, take care of that. So, um, you know, check into some like, random things there it would have been smart to you know check that out there but um that was something that we were kind of unexpected there but the amusement rides the two seat the four seater that we have uh mm -hmm. people love them when people are hearing people screaming you know they're just having a blast going on a roller coaster or something like the they're called feet ticklers it's just an air compressor that shoots air through it and yep. like if you're going through a jelly filled and it feels like they're like stinging you so you'll hear people scream and then people will stop in the mall and they're like, what's going on? So yeah. screams, fun, high energy. It's, it's what brings people in. Do you get many people that are kind of get motion sick or anything like that? Cause it's probably their first time in VR, I guess. If they just kind of think, oh, that's cool. And just jump on. Yeah. Um, so usually at this point you can kind of tell the, like what's going to happen with a lot of people there. So, um, a lot of times, like you said, you know, it's it's a new experience for these people. So I know that if they're coming in, they're in a mall, a lot of people are just browsing. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just ask them, you know, I'll explain what we have. Have they ever tried VR? Um, a lot of the questions now is, we have a Quest 2 at home there. I was like, all right, well, this is a little bit different. Now we're going <laughs> into immersive land here. So, um, you know, are you okay with like, you know, amusement rides? Yeah. And like, come here real quick. Are you okay? You have four minutes. So I usually throw them on a ride just to see like, it, cause they're either going to experience it for the first time and they're going to love it. And then they yeah. usually stick around and spend more money. Um, or two, we're going to find out real quick that, you know, they, they get motion sick or anything like that. And, um, I always let them know, like, if anything, just take the headset off. You're not stuck on the ride or anything like that. I'll hit stop and, you know, jump off. Uh, most of the time, you know, they're like, yeah, we're perfectly fine. You know, I feel a little wobbly. Mm -hmm. I haven't had anybody throw up. So that was my biggest fear of opening a VR arcade. Yeah. Should have said that. Um, I was very worried of just like, from my experience like with Resident Evil 7 back then, I was like, uh, you know, what if people are just throwing up? It, like, you know, like, you know, I was super terrified of that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think yeah. we've had that in the arcade at Zurich. I'm sure we've had that a few times before. Yeah. So no throw up so far. We're almost a full year. Let's do one year perfect track record. <laughs> so. <laughs> what would you say is the most important thing to having a successful VR arcade? I know you've only been open 
since like November. But what do you, what have you found is the key most important thing? Yeah. Um, variety is super important. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually caring, uh, and enjoying what you do. Um, and then customer service, you know, like I said, this is the first time that a lot of people are experiencing virtual reality. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I said, our, our main thing there is let people try it. It, you know, it takes three, four minutes of your time. Um, it doesn't cost me any money there, but you know, if you do that, it's super important there and just build that relationship there in your community. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that takes off from there. Yeah. Yeah, it's really important to have that qualifying process to obviously, like you said, ask them the right questions and uh, maybe get them on there and see how they react. Because if you're just if you don't qualify them and they stick their heads on and it's like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? And they start puking everywhere and fainting and all that kind of stuff. Then it's going to be like we're never coming back here again. So, yeah, that is really important. <laughs> what kind of game do you think is missing from the VR arcade specific market? <laughs> um i don't know there's there's battle royales there's first person shooters there's mm -hmm. escape rooms um i i'm more into the like kind of horror jumpy type stuff mm -hmm. um so as i mentioned uh earlier you know the last of us is one of my favorite games of all time 100%. um you know so as is for a lot of people it mm -hmm. it Obviously, you know, it just has that beautiful narrative story there with the jump scares there. So um, if we could get something that has that beautiful narrative, um, just kind of like in your face, like it doesn't have to be a clicker, but, you know, something just kind of gripping you up there. And, you know, it's just kind of in the VR, I couldn't imagine something, you know, or maybe it's out there and I don't know about it yet there. Um, you know, it's something of that nature where it just has great narrative solid storyline uh but it just gives you that that thrill of you know something attacking you right in your face there so yeah that's what i would like to see so more of a jumpy kind of horror game yeah that's what i'm all about <laughs> yeah same here so, same here it's it, weird it, because i've played so many horror games in vr and they don't really do you know don't get jump scared or anything like that yeah but actually, no, I yeah. do get little jumpy moments and stuff, but like, I'm not like, it's weird because my brain's telling me that it's not real at the same time. So it needs to be something really freaked out. Like The Exorcist, I remember when I first played that. That was the first VR horror game I played. That did that did weird me out a little bit. Have you played The Exorcist, Legion? I have not. Yeah, no. so yeah, tr try it out. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty immersive and it's, you don't know what to expect and that's the thing and it's like you need to go here now but there's blood everywhere and it's like all these weird noises and stuff you might you might enjoy it yeah like um you, you remember the uh like uh i think it was pe the demo yeah, on yeah. uh like playstation mm -hmm. with kojima and uh it was kind of basically it was supposed to become silent hill mm -hmm. um even something like that you know where uh it's just terrifying so give me yeah. give me more terrifying thing <laughs> yeah is i i don't know if it's like if it's too scary maybe the platforms say it's too scary you can't make a vr game this scary or uh, do you think there's some kind of something stopping that from happening um i mean Grand Theft Auto exists, so I think that there's <laughs> a lot of <laughs> I, I, th I think there's a lot of things where there's like sure stamp it send it yeah yeah um, but um, I could imagine um, just with all the like uh, VR fell videos that are out there, people running into microwaves and stoves and their wall yeah um, you know if something jumps out and terrifies you um, maybe they're like all right there's a there's a little bit of a health risk here so let's you know yeah. dial it back a bit so. Um, or, you know, maybe, yeah, you know, health risks with like heart attacks or things like that. We're like, all right, you know, let's <laughs> not try and scare them too much. But then like, if it, that's just great, like great advertisement, right? This game's so scary. It gave someone a heart, heart attack. 
<laughs> that, would sell, that would sell right <laughs> Ter- terrible and beautiful marketing all at once there you know <laughs> i'm sorry to use your heart attack but this game is the real deal <laughs> hey you know what they say any any press is good press right which headset would you say is the most uh, versatile and user-friendly for yourself being a vr arcade owner which is like the most hassle-free i, I guess that you'll they will have their issues but what's been the best one for you so far yeah um if i it would be a toss-up there between the htc vive focus threes and then the quest threes um i would go wireless if i could again mm-hmm. um you know the while i love the valve index um people are getting used to wireless you mm-hmm. know yeah. um so while you know while it's an amazing headset there i think it's just kind of like okay people are starting to get used to vr on the market quest twos are down to 200 dollars here in the states so super accessible uh you know beautiful entry point um so getting something that's familiar the quest two quest threes are great options uh the vi focus threes if you're doing like a free roam experience Mm -hmm. uh it has a beautiful thing that it can um I can't remember the exact term, uh, so forgive me on that there, but it does have a way where it like locks in the uh, boundary there. Yeah. And I, I see that issue on Quest 2 sometimes there where mm-hmm. like I'll put people in the free room and then the floor level becomes like here. So I got to go back into the settings there, readjust it. And while it's minor stuff there, um, I haven't had that issue with the Vibe Focus 3s there. So um those would be the headsets that I would lean towards um, mm-hmm. if you're looking at adding those to your venue. Um, some of some of our machines also come equipped with Picos. Um, amazing headset there. I really like those ones. Um, just not as much accessible. You know, they're not as accessible yeah. over here in the States there. So mm-hmm. um, can't speak too much besides the little bit of experience I have with them. So Quest 3, Quest 2, both great options. Probably the most accessible, best price range. Vive Focus 3 is a little bit more comfortable and uh, yeah, the battery backups, things like that there. So comfortable headset. Yes, in general, from all of the arcades that I speak to, and I speak to quite a lot of arcades, overall, I think <laughs> I think the Vive Focus 3 is probably the, the most popular headset, I would say. Uh, along with yeah. the, the Quest, the Quest 2 and, and 3, but I think the Vive Focus 3 it's just it works so well for vr arcades what do you think is the future of vr arcades do you think more free roam kind of experiences is where you're looking to go yeah um i think there's there's still a lot of cool machines out there there's Mm -hmm. a lot of companies um overseas that have a lot of places that um you know i'm in talks with that have like these fighter jet looking machines that are like, you know, two person uh, cockpit, you know, a couple of different games where you're shooting down planes, kid stuff there. There's a lot of stuff that adds in more of the immersion. So now that's adding in like spraying water, giving you heat, wind, um, kind of like a 5D theater, but all in virtual reality. Um, there's the treadmills, um, yeah. you know, um there was a setup that i was looking at originally and um awesome setup it's just with us being in a mall if we ever go to move out of the mall Mm -hmm. we also had to think of okay how much is it going to cost to tear that whole machine down you know so uh if i were to do it we'll probably do like standalone uh you know treadmills there not like a full giant system of it there um but if you have you ever got to play with a treadmill there i haven't known unfortunately not yet I was going to say a little, little different experience than I was expecting, but also at the same time, kind of cool and unique. And that's, mm-hmm. like you said, that's really what we focus on at the arcade is, you know, most people don't have a roller coaster in their household. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so when they come there, we want it to be a unique experience that they can just go home and replicate there. Yeah. So that is something that we want to continue adding, but I think free room is something that, it's a way that you can bring your friends, group of friends and stuff into. And I think it's the most accessible for people in like arcades. 
Yeah, it's really interesting because of where you're located, you get a lot of those people walking past and like you said, hearing the screams and that kind of stuff. If you had a different location, the the machines might not be as popular. Like because you're getting a lot of you're drawing a lot of attention. That's the good, really good thing about them is people are hearing and seeing and they get curious and they ask questions and then they jump on. So I think you're, it's a lot to do with your location. It's it's a really good place to be in a mall, especially with all of that foot traffic like all the time. So yeah, I mean yeah, you you definitely nailed it there. If we had our own standalone building outside of the mall, mm-hmm. um, you know, is a roller coaster bringing in a family of four? Maybe not. Daniel, thank you very much for your time. It's been a blast talking to you about VR and your arcades. Uh, great story. You've only been open for a very short period of time, but it sounds like you're doing really well and wish you all the best in the rest of the year and uh, your success. Thank you. And uh, once again, thanks for having me on. And hopefully somebody uh, this has, you know, helps them out a little bit there with, you know, starting their venture and, um, like you said, if you have any questions and you want to reach out to me, shoot me at uh, contact at realityroomvr.com. Happy Excellent. to answer any questions I can. Uh, do you have any other handles like Instagram or Twitter or anything like that, YouTube? Yeah, I was going to say uh, most of the stuff that we do right now is on Facebook. Okay. Um, so just follow us at the Reality Room VR. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can add us on Instagram. You know, we have TikTok and stuff like that set up there, but uh, it's not in full use. Shame on me. TikTok is a beautiful social. Uh, I just don't have time to do that there. So that is something I'm looking at uh, kind of yeah. pushing towards there. So you don't, don't be like me. Use yeah. TikTok. Yeah. You don't need TikTok. You've got, you've got roller coasters. You don't need TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> You're no, right. What yeah. was I thinking? Exactly. No, um, but definitely I'll link all of, uh, all of your socials in the post for sure. And everyone go follow him and check out his arcade if you live nearby. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming on. It's been great. See you guys. Okay, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, We are still working on our first patch for Atlantis, so keep an eye out for that. If you're interested in a seven-day free trial, just reach out to us. Let me know in the comments or reach out to us on Discord. It's been great. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.